Kamala Harris was not, was not a progressive prosecutor. The senator was often on the wrong side of history when she served as California's attorney general. With the growing recognition that prosecutors hold the keys to a fairer criminal justice system, the term progressive prosecutor has almost become trendy. This is how Senator Kamala Harris of California is a likely presidential candidate and former prosecutor describes herself. But she's not. Time after time, when progressives urged her to embrace criminal justice reform as a district attorney and then state's attorney general, Ms. Harris opposed them or stayed silent. Most troubling, Ms. Harris fought tooth and nail to uphold wrongful convictions that had been secured through official misconduct that included evidence tampering, false testimony, and the suppression of crucial information by prosecutors. Consider her record as San Francisco's district attorney from 2004 to 2011. Ms. Harris was criticized in 2010 for withholding information about a police laboratory technician who had been accused of intentionally sabotaging her work and stealing drugs from the lab. After a memo surfacing showing that Ms. Harris' deputies knew about the technician's wrongdoing and the recent conviction, but failed to alert defense lawyers, a judge condemned Ms. Harris's indifference to the systemic violation of the defendant's constitutional rights. Ms. Harris contested the ruling by arguing that the judge, whose husband was a defense attorney, had spoken publicly about the importance of disclosing evidence, had a conflict of interest. Ms. Harris lost. More than 600 cases handled by the corrupt technician were dismissed. No thanks to her. Ms. Harris also championed state legislation which parents whose children were found to be habitually truant in elementary, in elementary school could be prosecuted. This article is about a woman who was prosecuted under Kamala Harris's truancy laws because her her daughter has sickle cell anemia and is in and out of the hospital. Under those laws, uh, not only was she prosecuted, but the school failed to give her a proper lesson plan for a person that is on record medical as hospital records stating that she's in and out of the hospital and that she has this illness. This is under Kamala Harris. Despite concerns that it would disproportionately affect low income people of color. Isn't that what she calls herself? Because she doesn't call herself black. At least not all the time. Not until recently. And if you win, you would be the first black female president in the history of this nation. What does that mean to you? Well, listen, I, in every position that I've held, um, when I was district attorney, I was elected as the first woman um, of the city and county. I was the first woman of color in the entire state of California. Um, when I ran for attorney general and when I was elected, it was as the first woman ever and as the first person of color ever. And Ms. Harris was similarly regressive as the state's attorney general. When a federal judge in Orange County ruled that the death penalty was unconstitutional in 2014, doesn't she talk about the death penalty a lot? Ms. Harris appealed. In a public statement, she made the bizarre argument that the decision, that the decision undermines important pro protections that our courts provide to defendants. The, the approximately 740 men and women awaiting execution in California might disagree. In 2014, she declined to take a position on Proposition 47, a ballot initiative approved by voters that reduced certain low-level felonies to misdemeanors. She laughed that year when a reporter asked if she would support the legalization of marijuana for recreational use. Ms. Harris finally reversed the course in 2018, long after the public opinion had shifted on the topic. Remember on The Breakfast Club? So, and I know the answer to this, too. They say you oppose legalizing weed. That's not true. I know. <laughs> and, and, and look, I joke about it, half joking. Half my family's from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> They'd be so mad but, at you. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhaled. I did, I did inhale. inhale. <laughs> in 2015, she opposed a bill requiring her office to investigate shootings involving officers. And she refused to support statewide standards regulating the use of body-worn cameras by police officers. Didn't she say that she was the one who put that in place? For this, she incurred criticism from an array of left-leaning reformers, including Democratic state senators.
the ACLU, and San Francisco's elected public defender. The activist Felicia Jones, who has supported Ms. Harris for years, said, how many more people need to die before she steps in? Worst of all, Ms. Harris's record of wrongful conviction cases, consider George Gage, an electrician with no criminal record, who was charged in 1999 with sexually abusing his stepdaughter, who reported the allegations years later. The case largely hinged on the stepdaughter's testimony and Ms. Gage was, Mr. Gage was convicted. Afterward, the judge discovered that the prosecutor had unlawfully held back potentially exculpatory evidence, including medical reports indicating that the stepdaughter had been repeatedly untruthful with law enforcement. Her mother even described her as a pathological liar who lives in her lies. Her mama said that. Lives in the lies, honey. All right. 2015, when the case reached the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco, Ms. Harris's prosecutors defended the conviction. They pointed out that Mr. Gage, while forced to act as his own lawyer, had not properly raised the legal issue in the lower court as the law required. Forget the fact that there's evidence showing that he's innocent. He didn't do what he was supposed to do, so he's shit out of luck. The appellate judges acknowledged this impediment and sent the case to mediation, a clear signal for Ms. Harris to dismiss the case. When she refused to budge, let me read that again. When she, Ms. Harris, mama la, when she refused to budge, the court upheld the conviction on that technicality. Mr. Gage is still in prison serving a 70 year sentence where is kim kardashian when you need her you know you get people out of jail this case is not an outlier miss harris also fought to keep daniel larson damn daniel larson in prison on a 28 year to life sentence for possession of a concealed weapon even though his trial lawyer was incompetent and there was compelling evidence of his innocence. Relying on technicality, again, Ms. Harris argued that Ms. Larson failed to raise his legal arguments in a timely fashion. This time, she lost. She defended Johnny Baca's conviction for murder, even though judges found the prosecutor presented false testimony in the trial. She relented only after a video of the oral argument received national attention and embarrassed her office. And then there's Kevin Cooper. Jeez Louise! The death row inmate whose trial was infected by racism and corruption. He sought advanced DNA testing to prove his innocence, but Harris opposed it. After the New York Times expose of the case went viral, she re reversed her position. All this is a shame because the state's top prosecutor has the power and the imperative to seek justice. In cases of tainted convictions, that means conceding error and overturning them. Rather than fulfilling that obligation, Ms. Harris has turned legal technicalities into weapons. And I'm going to put in there for white supremacy so she could cement injustices. In the truth we hold, Ms. Harris recently published a memoir. She writes, America has a deep and dark history of people using the power of the prosecutor as an instrument of injustice. She adds, I know this history well of innocent men framed of charges brought against people without sufficient evidence of prosecutors hiding information that would exonerate defendants of the dispropor disproportionate application of the law. All too often, she was on the wrong side of that history. Is it true that politicians must make concessions to get the support of the key? Blah, 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 blah. Well, 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 well. You see, when Mamala Harris goes to bed at night, she doesn't wonder if the children that she reared from young will be shot down in the street. She doesn't wonder if someone will call the police on her children for no reason. She doesn't wonder that, like we do. So those problems don't bother her. Let's talk about some insignificant shit from her childhood that matters nothing today. We have already shown and proven that that busing program didn't even work. So we gonna make this the major topic of discussion? You should have seen how many times they ran this news cycle over and over. Oh, she's a hero for black people because she's fighting for busing. Busing! If you don't get out of here with that busing, 